Welcome to Shaping Power, Luba Masterworks from the Royal Museum for Central Africa in Belgium. This exhibition marks the inauguration of a new permanent program and a dedicated gallery for the arts of Africa here at LACMA. When I first began my graduate studies at Columbia University in New York, I knew I would study Luba art. So my first stop was the Royal Museum for Central Africa. And the first major Luba objects that I encountered were the very ones that we see in this gallery. So I went on to do two years of field research, living in Luba villages and towns, working with Luba royal office holders, talking with women, talking with title holders, talking with chiefs. Field work is a set of conversations, and these conversations have been integral to forming an understanding of Luba political practices, Luba political philosophy, and the role that these objects played. Most of the works of art presented in the exhibition date from the 18th or 19th century. The Luba Kingdom is one of the most important of Central Africa, and its dates are thought to be somewhere between the 17th and early 20th century. However, Luba royal practices continue today, and Luba culture is extremely vibrant as we speak. The exhibitions include objects that belong to rulers. These are objects that were used to invest an ordinary man into the office of ruler. So the objects were used as devices for transformation. They literally transformed an ordinary person into a semi-divine king. One of the most remarkable pieces in the show, it's called a Lukasa memory board. It dates to sometime in the pre-colonial period, and it literally served as a library of Luba royal knowledge. It was a repository for sacred esoteric wisdom associated with the kingdom. And only those who were initiated into the historical association called Mboudie had the knowledge to be able to recite the histories at, that were stimulated by the beads in their configurations and in their shapes and their forms. So men of memory, as they were called, would hold the object in their hand and by pointing to the beads and touching the surface of the board, memories were stimulated and recitations were narrated. One of the most beautiful objects, to my view, in the exhibition is the water pipe, adorned with a female figure gesturing to her breasts. This female figure is the ultimate in Luba concepts of beauty the elegant coiffure, the beautiful scarification patterns, and the downcast eyes. One of the features of Luba art that's so characteristic is the interiority of the figures. They seem to be looking at the spirit world rather than at us. Another feature of many of the objects, including the pipe, is the gesture of hands to breasts. Some might think that this is a reference to fertility, but Luba people say that it's because women held the secrets of Luba royalty within their breasts. They were the guardians of Luba sacred knowledge. So one of the things that you'll notice in the exhibition is the predominance of the female image. Most Luba works of art depict the female form, whether they are women upholding the platforms of thrones or female figures surmounting the scepters of high status individuals, all of these objects in one way or another are alluding to the power of women. Women were the foundation of the kingdom. There's a proverb that says, men are chiefs in the daytime, but women are chiefs at night. In Luba culture, it's said that only the body of a woman is strong enough to hold a spirit as powerful as that of a king. One of the things that you'll notice with a lot of the figures that depict women are the cosmetic adornments that characterize them. For example, a proliferation of patterns on the torsos and sometimes the arms and the backs that are called scarifications. Scarification patterns are light incisions made into the surface of the skin into which herbal substances are embedded and which form a kind of a welt on the surface of the body. These scarification patterns have names 
They have meanings, and they serve as a kind of a biography of a person's life. The Luba Kingdom was so influential that many, many neighboring groups wanted to participate in the aura of Luba kingship. And as a result, they borrowed the trappings of Luba royal power. You'll see in the exhibition male figures from the Hemba, the Tabwa, the Kalundwe. And these figures represent chiefs or chiefs' matrilineages that were so important to the perpetuation of royal authority in these surrounding areas. In these works of art, the figures depict men, but the men gesture to their navels to honor their mothers and to honor the perpetuation of the lineage through the continuity of the maternal line. In addition, we have a contemporary installation. It's by Eme Mpane, entitled Congo, Shadow of the Shadow, from 2005. And it's a reference to the 1885 Berlin Conference, when Africa was carved into colonies by the European powers. At this moment in time, everything changed in Africa. And his work is about the kinds of challenges that Congo in particular has endured since that moment in time on the eve of the colonial era, through colonialism, post-colonialism, and even the protracted civil war of the last 20 years. So his work, made of nearly 5,000 matchsticks, is a kind of a play on the, the fragility of the human form vis-a-vis -vis the resilience of the shadow that emerges on the wall before it. So it's an opportunity for us to see through the lens of a contemporary artist some of the issues in the Luba past that have uh, defined the 20th century leading right up to the present moment. Shaping power gives us the opportunity not only to see some of the most celebrated works of African art in the world, and certainly the cream of the crop of Luba arts, and therefore to behold this remarkable aesthetic tradition. But also, the works of art are vehicles into Luba history, into the Luba past. They take us by the hand, and they allow us to learn so much about the richness and complexity of this important kingdom, and the degree to which Africa was a continent and remains a continent of incredibly important states and kingdoms and chieftaincies that each in their own way possess a legacy of knowledge and of lore that are embedded and generated by the objects on view. Let me go, let me go, let me go.